Welcome to a quick overview of the United States Bill of Rights. In the next couple of minutes, we will take a brief look at each amendment and its basic meaning. What is the Bill of Rights? What is its purpose? The Bill of Rights is the first ten amendments to the United States Constitution, and it was written to protect the basic rights of all American citizens regardless of their race, religion, or sex. Many Americans are more familiar with the First Amendment than any other. It provides protection for religion, assembly, press, petition, and speech, rights that can be traced all the way back to our roots as English citizens. The desire to worship freely drove many English citizens to come to the colonies in search of religious freedom. Memories of the intolerable acts led our leaders to ensure the rights of the people together freely in public, free from government interference. Benjamin Franklin and other early leaders also understood the importance of a free press and the free exchange of our thoughts and ideas to the health and well-being of our nation. The Second Amendment, or the right to bear arms, is one of the most controversial rights we have as Americans. It was originally included as a way to ensure that we would be able to defend ourselves from all threats, foreign and domestic. This desire to self-defense, along with the necessity of many frontier settlers to have a gun in order to provide food and protection, made this one of the most important rights to our Founding Fathers. Amendment number three was a direct response to the British quartering of soldiers in colonial homes in the years leading up to the war. While the government does indeed have the right to quarter soldiers in American homes today, it can only be done so during time of war and with the approval of Congress. Fortunately, we have never found ourselves in a situation where such drastic measures became necessary. Remembering the writs of assistance that British officials used to search the houses and businesses of many colonists, Amendment No. 4 makes it illegal for the police to search a home, business, or person without either a warrant identifying exactly what is being searched for or a probable cause for such a search. These next four amendments are known as the rights of the accused and are your best friends if you are ever accused of a crime. If you've ever watched a crime series on TV, you're probably familiar with our next amendment, number five. It lists several rights that are protected if you're ever accused of a crime. For one, neither you nor your spouse can ever be forced to testify against you in a court of law, nor can you be put on trial without first a grand jury making the decision that there is enough evidence against you to actually warrant a trial. You also can't be thrown in jail without receiving due process, which is just another way of saying that the police have to respect your rights. Nor can you be tried more than once for the same crime. And oh yeah, I almost forgot to tell you that while the government does have the right to seize your property without your permission, they can't do it unless it's for the good of the general public, and only if they offer you a fair amount of money for the property which they have taken. Amendment 6 guarantees you the right to a speedy, fair trial by jury, in which you also have the right to an attorney, if you desire. You also have the right to confront and question your accusers when you are put on trial. According to the American Bar Association, a civil case involves conflicts between people or institutions, such as businesses, while criminal cases involve enforcing public codes of behavior as embodied in the laws with the government prosecuting individuals or institutions. In a criminal case, the government brings charges against the person alleged to have committed the crime. The Seventh Amendment protects your right to a jury trial in either situation. The Eighth Amendment protects against cruel and unusual punishment. You can't be fined $10,000 for chewing gum or sentenced to death for jaywalking. In general, the punishment must fit the crime. Amendment 9 was put in place in recognition of the fact that we have far too many rights to list and that there were other things that the Founding Fathers could not predict would be necessary to protect when the Constitution was written in 1787. It states that we have other rights that are not specifically listed in the Constitution. Rights such as the freedom to travel, have a family, or own a car. Last, but certainly not least, Amendment 10 states that the powers not expressly given to the national government by the Constitution belong to the states. This was put in place to limit the power that the federal government could have 
and in the process contributed to the growth of federalism in this country. By the way, for those of you that don't know, federalism is a sharing of power between the states and the federal government. Remember, Amendments 5 through 8 are known as the rights of the accused and are designed to protect the rights of anyone accused of a crime. Now, before you move on, don't forget to go to the next slide and watch the video to help you remember the hand game that we learned to memorize the Bill of Rights.